how much money does YouTube pay me this month? The month after I deleted 146 videos from this channel. That's half my videos. I'm going to let you into my YouTube studio dashboard. We're gonna, we're gonna see everything. We're gonna see my analytics. Analy <laughs> I'm gonna see my analytics. I'm gonna show you my analytics. Google AdSense payments, my average watch time, even my click-through rates. Yes, my click-through rates. And I don't even think I'm allowed to show you my CTR levels. So quick, we've got to do this before they shut me down. Hello, I'm Neil Mossy. I'm a development producer helping high-achieving creators and performers just like you to get ideas out of your head and out onto here on YouTube where they belong. Especially if you have a background like me in broadcast radio or television. Look, here's some footage of me right now as station manager running my college radio station, playing the B-sides and album tracks that you just can't hear anywhere else. They'll play the B-sides and album tracks that you just can't hear anywhere else. I don't know what it means either. So let's get into my YouTube studio and have a look at some money figures. And look at it, it's looking lovely. 2,841 subscribers. I love each and every one of you, so thank you for that. But we're going to click on the big fat analytics. I can't say that word today for some reason. And looking good, according to the algorithm bot. <laughs> looking good, your channel is doing pretty much as usual, but I'm gonna show you why it's not quite as usual in quite a major way. But you can see I'm getting 31,000 views, 1.6 thousand hours a month, and my estimated revenue at the moment, I'm in the middle of December, it's looking like $274. But if I click on the revenue tab first, because I know that's that's really what you want to see, isn't it? Have a look at these months. A little peek, a little bit of spoiler there. Let's cut away to explain why this month is so different. I deleted, removed or unlisted 146 videos. Here's some footage of it running under here right now. Do you know what? I think it's one of my favorite videos. But the big story this month is that I removed half of my videos. I used to have about 300 and six and then I did a massive experiment where I effectively made 146 ones disappear because I want to niche this channel. This channel it has just got so much stuff <laughs> coming from all different directions. Like they've got travel videos and how to's. I wanted to see what would happen if I removed them. I wasn't expecting to remove half of the videos from my channel. I did that at the start of October and you can see that October is pretty much the same as September and the revenue went up. It went up. With half the videos live, I got $20 more. I got a 10% uplift in my revenue. Things are changing outside of my channel anyway. I believe that revenue always goes up between September and December because there are more advertisers selling more stuff. First up, it's October. And if I go to the overview, I've got 36,000 views. I removed all the videos on the 5th of October. There is a drop in views. There's a really clear drop in views. I was getting getting about 1,400 a day. Then I removed half the videos and I started getting about 1,000 views per day, which I'm not complaining about. And I think they are better views. And we'll drill into some more figures if niching my channel so aggressively has had some benefits to my channel. Let's compare this to November. So my views are down 4,000 in November. The watch time has dropped ever so slightly. Subscribers are similar, but the revenue, the revenue Revenue's gone crazy. We can see that my RPM, which is revenue per melee or revenue per thousand views overall, it's 8.71. That's usually quite good. If I compare that with October, it's gone up uh, over a dollar. So that means I'm already making more money per thousand views, which is a good thing. So were there any downsides with removing so many videos from my channel? Let's go back to October and I'm gonna click on reach. Now reach is where it shows my click-through rates. Now click-through rates, as you might be aware, is the percentage of impressions or basically thumbnails. If I scroll down to the impressions funnel, <laughs> I should put an echo on that, shouldn't I? The impressions funnel. 
It sounds like something that I really do not want from my doctor. So we went from 300,000 impressions to 16,000 views, which is a 5.4% click-through rate. And the average view duration is two minutes 49, which is up, it's up hugely. So I think another huge benefit of niching your channel and removing poorly performing videos is that my average view duration overall went up. It used to be around well under two and a half minutes literally the very next day after i removed the videos that went up to two minutes 49 and it's gone even higher since then whether that brings me more money in the future we'll wait and see let's compare this funnel with november and watch the figures jump the views from impressions stayed the same the click-through rate went up from 5.2% and the average view duration, look, that's gone up even higher. I have removed half of the videos from my channel and the average time that people spend on videos has gone up quite significantly. On the engagement tab, I'm gonna have to put the month in the corner. This was October, I got 1.7 thousand hours, 2.48 average view duration. And in November, the watch time stayed about the same, it's down 8%, the view duration has gone up. There's a new interesting window on the analytics. This is called Key Moments for Audience Retention. And it shows me the videos that have had the, the slowest drop off. So my Amazon Associates, how much I earn from Amazon Associates, still has 82% watching at 30 seconds. If you want to compare my drop offs with your drop offs, I've got them playing in the window now. I've, I've not seen this metric before and serves as a reminder to try and stuff as much as possible into the first 30 seconds of every video. But I think my biggest surprise is, is my revenue each month because I, I was convinced that I would lose a lot of money. And in October, my revenue stayed the same. And let's go down to the months. It hasn't been going down, <laughs> let's put it that way. I really thought that by losing so many videos that I would take a hit on the revenue. So I'm shocked that it stayed the same and it's going up. And if I look at the last 28 days, we're halfway through December. My estimated revenue at the moment is 274, $274, which is kind of comparable with the last couple of months. My top videos for the last 28 days, they're just there. You can see the garden tools videos that I didn't delete because I'm a wuss. They've dropped because it's not summer here in the UK at the moment. We've got how to change your mobile phone in the UK. My all time big hitter is the Zoom video files. Let's take a look at the revenue from this. Oh my goodness. So since I've published this video, I've had 25,000 views, $278 from one video. Oh, if only I could get one of those out every month, that would be really helpful. The RPM is higher than my average because I think I get a global audience for this. Yeah, look, 32% of my viewers are in the United States. So that's gonna push my RPM up. And for a typical month, let's look at the last 28 days. Yeah, $64 a month. We'll see if that stays the same in January. I think there's gonna be a massive drop off. And maybe you're wondering, what did I do with the 146 videos? I've now started up five channels. So let's take a look. This is my regular channel that you're watching now, the Neil Mossy channel. I moved all of my product reviews, my garden tools, my how-tos. I moved those onto my Tightwad Dad channel. I'll put a link up top and, and in the description if you want to chart the progress there. How many have I got? Oh, it's not too bad. I've got about 15 videos up and uh, nine subscribers. So that's a good experiment. My IKEA dad channel. Oh my goodness. I've got a whole video about how to set up a YouTube channel and I set up my IKEA dad channel. I've made so many IKEA videos in the last month. I just haven't had time to upload them. And this is the huge downside with niching that if you do separate them onto other channels, you're kind of diluting the time that you've got. And my, well, I, I was gonna say, I was gonna say my favorite channel. <laughs> I'm fond of the Trains channel. Again, I've got dozens of videos ready to go on this and I just haven't uploaded them yet. So what do you think? Was removing 146 videos a good thing or a bad thing? And is it something you're considering for your channel? And how is your channel doing? Please leave a comment below. I'd love to see how your channels are doing. And if you like these videos where I go through my analytics and share share my financial pain with you why not give me a thumbs up it will help others to find it and it will help me to, to make more of them and right now here this is what YouTube thinks you should be watching next <laughs>